and that is companion cases and spotters today is a very special day for me so this is this is first anniversary of our rad vision snk youtube channel i thank all the subscribers supporters followers of my channel who has supported me since one year i hope you will support the channel subscribe and share with your friends and colleagues similarly in the coming years so first case you can see this is a child Uh, you can see there is a fracture noted in the midiaphyseal region of the right femur with adjacent callus formation and also there is fracture also noted in the metadiaphyseal region of the left femur with adjacent significant soft tissue swelling and this child there is a, a suspicious history of uh, physical abuse however the bone density is normal and there is no remodeling of the bones so this is the first case we will try to see the other companion case and then we will come to the diagnosis of both the cases this is the other case where you can see there is typical bowing deformity of bilateral femurs there is even fracture and even there are even significant growth arrest lines there is significant osteopenia and bowing deformities of the visualized bones so this is a companion case so this case typically this is a case of battered baby syndrome and this one is nothing but osteogenesis imperfecta so most commonly we will confuse between batter baby syndrome and osteogenesis imperfecta so we'll try to see the points which favor batter baby syndrome over osteogenesis imperfecta so these are all the points which favor batter baby syndrome over uh, osteogenesis imperfecta we remember metaphyseal corner fractures or bucket handle fractures posterior rib fractures that is posterior ends of the ribs are fractured even costochondral junction injuries are more common in, in case of batter baby syndrome non parietal bone fracture or multiple skull bone fractures diastatic fractures or depressed fractures scapular sternal and outer one third of the clavicle fractures are more more common in battered baby syndrome and there will be no family history of osteogenesis imperfecta no history of severe osteopenia no evidence of bowing deformities or remodeling of bones or vermian bones seen in battered baby syndrome and one more important sign or we have to remember is tadpole sign or lollipop sign which is nothing but bridging vein thrombosis leading to subdural hemorrhages in case of a child suspected with uh, abuse head trauma or non accidental trauma so what is this tadpole sign here you can see this is the thrombosed vein bridging vein and this is the thromb uh, hemorrhage at the level of tip of the bridge, bridging vein so this this nothing but this forms the head of the tadpole and this form the tail of the tadpole so this is the tadpole sign seen in uh, a non accidental trauma and you can see these are chronic subdural hygromas or hemorrhages so and these are the chronic uh, subdural hemorrhages and also here you can see these are the bridging vein thrombosis so this is the tadpole sign seen in bridging vein thrombosis in case of non accidental trauma or battered baby syndrome or shaken baby syndrome so remember these findings next case you can see here you can see there is a radiolucent lesion with ground glass matrix which is surrounded by a thick rim of cortex well defined thick rim of cortex another similar case you can see there is a geographical lytic lesion and even you can see there are fat densities even there is a calcified matrix within the lesion and here you can see there is a well defined sclerotic rim seen at center of the geographic lytic lesion typically in the intertrochanteric region of femur so this is classical rind sign in fibrous dysplasia and this is a case of liposclerosing myxofibromas tumor so this is liposclerosing myxofibromas tumor which uh, typically occurs in the intertrochanteric region of femur and this is the classical rind sign in fibrous dysplasia so these are nothing but companion cases we have to remember and sometimes this rind sign is also seen in cmf or even osteofibrous dysplasia next case you can see there is a 12 year male came with gray skin joint pains weight loss and jaundice you can see the liver is typically enlarged and you can see the there is increased density of the liver normal liver the h u will be up to 45 to 55 h u but here the h u is more than 55 and even up to 70 or 75 h u s so whenever the liver is enlarged with increased h u with these symptoms i will tell the diagnosis here this is the other case 24 year male obese and easy fatigability you can see here also the liver is enlarged but when compared with this this is the liver density is typically decrease so this is decreased density of the liver and this is increased density or attenuation of the liver so this a is nothing but the hemochromatosis case b is nothing but hepatic steatosis cases so both these are companion cases so we will now we will try to see the causes for this 
increased density of liver and decreased density of liver. So diffuse increased attenuation of liver is normally seen in iron deposition that is hemocytosis, hemochromatosis or thalassemia where the unenhanced liver density can be greater than 75 HU. Other is copper deposition in Wilson's disease, glycogen storage diseases and even medications like amiodarone, thorostat etc. Called gold therapy. Whereas causes for diffuse decreased attenuation of liver are fatty infiltration as we have seen in this case, malignant infiltration, non-malignant infiltration, acute hepatitis or acute liver failure. So remember hemochromatosis and hepatic steatosis. Next case, here you can see there is abnormal enlargement of the left half of the cerebral parenchyma, there is abnormal hamartomatous proliferation of the gyri and sulci and even there is enlargement of the ventricle on the uh, same set of the enla uh, enlargement of the hemisphere and other case we will see here you can see typically there is hemiatrophy of the cerebral parenchyma on one side there is dilatation of the ventricle on that side and even there is bony expansion and remodeling with hyper expansion of the sinuses on that side so this case is nothing but hemimegalencephaly and this case is nothing but Dyke david of Masson syndrome which presents as hemiatrophy syndromes so always remember hemimegalencephaly there is abnormal proliferation of the gyri enlargement of the cerebral parenchyma on one side and even ventricle is enlarged on the ipsilateral side of the enlargement of the cerebral parenchyma here also remember there will be hemiatrophy with dilatation of the ventricle and remodeling of the skin with hyper expansion of the sinuses on that side of the hemiatrophy so these are all companion cases please remember the findings next case you can see this is the hand uh, you can see there are multiple lytic lesions with ill-defined septations and also you can see there are focal areas of rings and dot like arc like calcifications so these are nothing but multiple enchondromas noted in the hand bones here also you can see and there are even soft tissue hemangiomas so this was a case of uh, enchondromatosis or muffickish disease we will try to see the similar imaging findings in other case but it is not enchondromatosis here you can see there is short tubular expansion of the bones there is typical lace like or honeycomb pattern of bony trabeculations noted within the lesion there is even expansion of the medullary cavity even remodeling is there here also there is lace like pattern or honeycomb pattern noted in the um, even in the short tubular bones so this is a case of enchondromatosis typically along with Muffiki syndrome and here this is even there is a soft tissue swelling so this is a case of sarcoidosis so in sarcoidosis remember this lace like pattern or honeycomb pattern in the short tubular bones next even remember this is the enchondroma case and here we are can see other case where you can see there is a larger lesion there are multiple rings and dots of lipocalcifications there is even endostial scalloping with cortical breach so this favors chondrosarcoma over enchondroma so what are the points which favor chondrosarcoma or enchondroma you can remember size greater than 5 to 6 centimeters cortical breach as we have seen in this case even endostial scalloping which is involving greater than two-thirds of the cortical thickness even at some periosteal reaction soft tissue mass beyond the bone and even increase uptake on bone scan so these are the findings which favor chondrosarcoma over enchondroma other differentials can be of enchondroma can be spina ventusa even even thalassemia where you can see there are diffuse expansion remodeling of the all short tubular bones of the hands thalassemia or hemolytic anemias and this is enchondromatosis so these are all the differentials next case here you can see in the breast there is a large lucent lesion typically mimic typically of fat density noted it in the breast this is the other case where you can see there is a well-defined lesion noted in the breast where you can see fat density stromal component and even the glandular component and surrounded by a well-defined capsule so this is a case of breast lipoma and this is a case of breast hematoma so both can mimic one another so remember this well-defined capsule is typically seen in breast hamartoma next case here you can see this is a case of trauma where you can see there are fracture of the superior inferior pubic ramus on right side and even inferior pubic ramus on left side here the this is the bladder which is opacified however you can see there is spillage of the contrast into the adjacent pelvis typically adjacent to the fracture site so this is the bladder rupture here also this is other case of bladder rupture where you can see these are the superior inferior pubic rami fractures however there is a triangular area of contrast opacification which is typically noted close to the interabdominal wall adjacent to the bladder so this is nothing but intraperitoneal rupture of bladder 
whenever you see the strangler areas of a contrast leak into the anteroabdominal wall or close to the anteroabdominal wall and along the omentum suspect extraperitoneal rupture of bladder so this is intraperitoneal rupture of bladder where the uh, contrast will leak into the bowel loops and even in the pelvis and into the peritoneum here this is extraperitoneal rupture of bladder next case you can see there is a large lesion there is a large lesion arising from the left kidney and typically you can see the class sign and this lesion is not crossing the midline there is no significant destruction of bone or spinal canal extension here there is other lesion where which is typically seen in the right uh, right hypochondrium and even extending into the right perineal area there is complete uh, loss of the op loss of uh, outline of the right kidney and this lesion is crossing onto the midline which is even uh, encasing the vessels and lifting the vessels but here there is no typical invasion and even crossing the midline onto opposite side so this is a case of wilms tumor or nephroblastoma this is a case of neuroblastoma so both form companion cases next case you can see there is a, a prominent dilatation of the posterior subarachnoid space which is causing impinging over the spinal cord with even cord edema at that level so, and typically this posterior CSS space is typically mimicking the scalpel sign and however the ventral CSS space is maintained other case you can see clearly there is a C-shaped indentation over the posterior, sp posterior thecal sac which is causing compression over the spinal cord with minimal cord edema however the ventral CSS space is effaced so this is a case of scalpel sign in dorsal arachnoid whip here this is nothing but C-shaped indentation seen in spinal cord herniation so these are the differentiating points these are the scalpel sign and also the ventral CSS space is preserved in case of dorsal arachnoid web whereas if there is a c-shaped indentation over the spinal cord with effacement of the ventral CSS space remember uh, spinal cord herniation even sometimes CT myelography 3D cis sequence and fiesta sequence helps in differentiating along with the routine conventional sequences thanks thanks to all my subscribers well wishers supporters and students for successfully completing one year of rad vision snk please subscribe like comment and share and support my channel in the coming years thank you all